Hi, I'm Joe, and you're watching Ninjoke. I made a hex node, and I'm going to explain to you how it works. This is part one, points of a hexagon. Okay, let's start. I decided that... Well, okay, I recorded this once before, and it didn't turn out quite visually as appealing as I thought it would. So, I decided to just re-record the... the entire project. So, yet again, we'll... well, not yet again for you, but yet again for me. We are going to be making a hex node. What is a hex node? A hex node is something that creates a hexagonal tessellation, or most commonly known as a hex grid. We'll be using, I believe, I still haven't searched up the website. Um, I'll put it up here in text. I believe it is hexgrid.org or .com. We'll be using the math from that website to design and make this node. So to start off, let's get rid of this cube, and we're going to use a plane. This plane will accurately depict the hexagon grid as it's forming, as we're going to be using UV space, or a Cartesian space that starts from zero and goes to one in both directions. So with our plane here, we have its base material, let's create it. We have this base material, let's call it hex mat for now. You can call it whatever you want. And we'll also make another workspace. So I want this built off shading. There we go. And I'm just gonna call this node or nodes. And this space will just solely deal with displaying this node group. So when our shading tab becomes too small to display it, we will be using the nodes tab. Okay, to start off this material, let us delete this. Okay. So the first time I decided to break down the node from its most basic, well, most basic inner nodes, because this is going to be a node unto itself, but it is built out of multiple node groups. Kind of like how a program is built out of multiple functions. But when I was doing that, that wasn't very visually appealing. I didn't like how it was going, so I decided to just stop that, start again. And this time, we're going to be starting the way I or originally did when I developed this method of creating a hex grid. We're going to be starting with first just drawing a hexagon. So to do that, I scroll through this document. I have an accompanying document that hopefully will be posted in the description of this video once I am done. And looking through it, we need to start with magnitude and acute. These are two custom nodes that just help me, you know, <laughs> help me get the magnitude of a vector. So these are just two math nodes. So let's start with magnitude. To create a magnitude node, I believe everyone should know the equation. If not, I will stop here and explain the magnitude equation. The magnitude of a vector can be thought of as the length of the vector itself and is derived through the square root of the summation of each of its components squared. So to make this magnitude node, we'll start off with a separate XYZ. This separate XYZ node will take in a vector and split it into its XYZ components. Then we will square each of those components. So now we need three, three math nodes. 
Well, I should actually first turn this to power. And then pass in X, Y, and Z into their respective bases. Following this, we we sum all these three values together. Then finally, if you took a look at the equation, you'll know what's happening and duplicate. We're going to square root that. This is now our magnitude node. Control G will group it. We will lead the input to vector and we'll lead the output from the square root value. We can now go outside of the node by hitting tab and naming it magnitude. We hit the shield to protect it so we can reference it later. And we can delete it for now. We'll get back to that as soon as we make the acute node. To make the acute node, we start off by getting a math node. All of this is just basic math, so we start with a series of math nodes. We'll move on to getting color nodes and everything else involved vector nodes when we're actually trying to draw out the hexagon. So the start of the acute node is a subtraction. Subtraction will be less than compare multiply two multiplies and an add so let me try explain what's going on here we are trying to determine if a given angle is the smallest out of two angles this technically isn't the definition of acute, but I'm using the context of acute, meaning just kind of the smallest angle out of two. So this will be fed into the less than and the multiply. This less than will then be checking if the secondary angle, let's call it, is less than our given angle. We'll then compare this value to zero. So if this less than node returns zero, then that means our angle is greater. If it is greater, we then need to multiply this value, which will be a one or a zero, by our given angle. We will feed our given angle as soon as we group all these nodes together. So we then attach these two values together. I fed this in. Well, it doesn't matter where this goes. And then we feed the value from this here. And the output should be our results. Okay, so this is our sec. Let me group all of this and we'll review. This is our secondary angle. The input 
will be our primary angle. Let me just name it so it's easier to follow along. So there we have it. That This calculates our secondary angle. The given angle is our primary angle. And that will be fed into, I believe, every other free node here. We will not have some leniency on the compare. Then finally, there. Okay, so here's what this does. We have our primary angle and our secondary angle. Our secondary angle is multiplied by the result of this. The result of this checks which one is the lower angle. If this secondary angle is lower or less than, then this will return a 1 meaning we multiply our secondary angle times one. And if this is, we multiply our secondary angle times one and we feed the one into the compare. If one is not equaled, oops, that's my bad. The compare should not have this value. If one is not equal to zero, then this value will return zero, multiplying our primary angle by zero. When these values are added up, we have our acute angle. Let's call this acute. If the inverse is true and our primary angle is in fact lower, or sorry, less than our secondary angle, this will spit out zero. Is zero equal to zero? Yes, this will spit out one and multiply it by our primary angle. On the other hand, this will then multiply our secondary angle by zero. And when those values are added up, our primary angle will be spit out as the acute. This is kind of a complex comparator but all you have to know is when you feed it in an angle, it will give you the smaller out of two values. So let's call this the acute node. We hit that shield so it's protected and delete. Now that we're done with those minor math nodes, we can move on to the first node that has something to do directly with the hex generation process. And that would be the hex point node. The hex point node essentially generates the position of the six points of the hexagon based on a given angle. These given angles are fixed angles. It's every 60 degrees. So starting at zero, we go 60, 120, 180, 240, 300, and we get the points relative to a lot of factors, including, including size, height, and the general space we're drawing in. We'll get to all that later, but to start off the hex point node, we're going to need a conversion. This conversion is more for me because I don't like dealing with radiance, so I would rather deal with degrees. So I'll be giving a degrees, the 0 to 360, well, 0 to 300. And this will convert it into radians since all math, computer-wise, uses radians. It's just easier. Following that, we're going to use some math from our hex grid website. And shift D, shift D. So one line will be returning the Y, and this, and this other line will be returning the X. The x will be a product of the cosine of the angle uh, 
Uh, apologies, that was not a full description. <laughs> I was just trying to look for sine. Okay. The x will be a product of the cosine of the angle multiplied by the size and then summed with the offsets of the x. I'll explain what all of those values are as soon as I have everything set up. So next we need to multiply and add nodes. It would have been easier just to duplicate a multiply and add node. I am not focused. Uh, yep, there we go. So multiply and add. We'll be multiplying cosine, we'll be multiplying sine. This radiant value will be put into cosine and sine. Sorry, if you're looking at the diagram on my uh, doc documentation, you'll see that the lines go a bit wonky. It would have been easier just to look at the equation. Too bad I don't have it in front of me. So multiplier, da da da, value will come in later. Sign, add it, value will come in later again. Then now we can bind XYZ. This output should then be the position of one of the points of the hexagon, given which degree we feed into it. So if we group all these nodes now, I will be able to add the values that should be input to this, this node. So the first input will be degrees. I can actually just directly feed that there and then move this up. Second input will be size. The following input will be offset X, followed by offset Y. Both these values do not have, actually yes, they do have negatives, that's my bad. So all of that can be left the way it is. Degrees already decided how it's going to be. And we'll feed this into their right places. So in both cases, we're adding... No, we're multiplying by size and adding offsets. So offset X, offset Y. Then the output is our hex point, essentially. You can actually call this hex point just for clarification. Sorry if my voice is going in and out. I'm looking back and forth between documentation. We can now exit that and we can name it our hex point node. Hit the shield so we can use it later. And actually, we're going to shunt this off to the side because the next node we're going to be doing is the single hex node. This single hex... <clears throat> sorry, my voice cracked so badly. This single hex node is then going to be used to generate a hexagon. So using hex point, we're going to need to duplicate this into five. Am I right? Five or six? Six. I have no idea why I thought it's five. Duplicate this into six. We now we now set the proper degrees, so we're gonna start with zero. This one is sixty. One twenty. One eighty. 
240. And coming up on the last one, 300. This will then generate every hex point we need. Hmm. They're kind of tangential nodes that need to be made off of this. I'm going to add them in here, but they're going to be somewhat hard to explain. But firstly, we need to deal with another hex equation node, essentially. This node, which you can find the math for on the website, is going to be called the Delta Calculation node. So to create the Delta Calculation node, it's just simply the Delta values. This grid we are making is going to be called a flat top hex grid. That means that the height can be calculated by getting the square root of 3 multiplied by the size. And the change in x or delta x can be gained by multiplying the size by 1.5. So that's pretty simple. Let's just get a math node. In fact, whoops, what just happened? Math place. Okay, let's get a math node. Let's set it to multiply. Let's have two of those. Then let's get another math node. Set that square root. And feed it into this. Set this to 1.5. And you know what? We need to know this is one thing. Let's frame it. Like a good painting at museum. Let's frame it. Let's label it delta y. I failed. I selected the wrong thing. Let's name this frame delta y. And in fact, let's name this delta x. Just so we know what it is. We can now group this into the delta calculation node. Ooh, don't forget to set this to three. Three. So square root of three times this value will be the size. Gives you delta y. Let's output. Call that delta y. I don't know why you can set min and max for output. I guess just to clamp it. Either way, second output, let's put that on top because, you know, I like things orderly. X before Y. And let's call that Delta X. So there we have it. Let's not forget to multiply the size by 1.5 and we get Delta X and Delta Y. We can now name this group Delta Calculations. And you know we need to hit that shield because we're going to be using it later. Okay. That is the first out of two more. First out of three tangential parts to this single hex node. The next part will be the height and width. Width is calculated by simply multiplying the size times 2. So width will just be, for the time being, a math node set to multiply and put a 2. The height, however, will be, well, it's hard to say this, but the height will be delta y. So essentially we can go in here and just copy this frame. I hope this works, otherwise I'm gonna look the fool. I look the fool. We're gonna copy all the contents of this. <laughs> Exit, V, and we're gonna rename this height.
The calculations are essentially the same. We will feed in size to this. There are some things that happen to the size before it's fed in that I will explain as soon as we have this all set up. So with all this entered, all the data entered, we can now just group this. These are way too close for what we need to do. <laughs> okay. Let's feed in our outputs first, since that will actually be the easiest part of this. Actually, let's move the hype back a bit. Okay. So let's go in, name the points different things so we at least know what we're looking at. Um, on the diagram, I have them named vector A, B, C, D, yada, yada, yada. This time, I might just actually go with hex point A, hex point B, and you know where this is going. Okay, for the values, we need to set tell this is the width. This is the height. And this is delta x and delta y. For the inputs, it's easier just to set them in here. There will be four value inputs. The first one will be the size. The second will be a new value known as margin. The margin is what gives the space between the hexagons. Not really the space. It's that black pattern between the hexagons. That will be our margin. We're going to do some simple maths with the margin before we feed it into anything else. Then we have the offset for the x. How far from the origin point of our UV plane is our hexagon will be determined by the offset x and the offset y. So we will make extensions from this. To make an extension or what I what I call an extension, it's called a router node. To make a router node, if you have a numpad, you go in and hit the divide symbol, flash, and then just click all outputs since we need a extension from all outputs except this vague one. Um, these outputs won't show or this command will not work if you do not have Node Wrangler enabled. I believe in the new Blender Node Wrangler is enabled by default, but in case it's not, go to your edit preferences, add-ons, and go search Node Wrangler. Once you find Node Wrangler, make sure it's enabled, installed, and you'll be able to make these routes. Either way, with these routes, we can now move our points to a relatively closer place so that they're just easier to access while we attach them to all of these. Margin actually does not need a routing node, so we're going to delete that. And size needs it, but it needs it to be down here somewhere. After that, we're going to need one more math node. It's going to subtract. This subtraction will then be used to create our margin. So we're going to subtract the margin from the size, essentially shrinking the hexagon relative to its own individual space, that will become much clearer when we start generating a hexagon grid. From this, we do need a routing node, so we're gonna do that. And then we need to feed everything into its correct position. That may take a while, so this is probably gonna be sped up. Now, just come out of whatever speed we've made. I'm going to be attaching the, let's call it the, the margin countability equation. 
and I'm just going to be attaching it to every node that deals with size. This will probably be sped up now. Now, the only thing that doesn't get the altered size is the delta calculations, because the delta calculations need to be based off our original specifications for a hexagon. Now that all this is set up, we can exit. We now have what I call the single hex node. Let's just call it single hex. We hit that shield because we're going to need to use it later. And now we can move it into position. Now, just to try and show you what we've been doing this whole time, I'm going to see if I can display this hexagon on this area. This may be a bit hard. Um, give me a second. Thinking, 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 thinking. Many hours later. Okay, so just to display what we've just done, I've hooked up this single hex node to a bunch of vector compare nodes that I just made and plugged in our UV value as the second comparator in all of these. Then I summed it all up. This, this last sum has a clamp, so it's between one and zero. Then I fed it into a color ramp and you can now see the points we have been generating on screen. Now, just to get even farther into explanation, this offset value. If you're wondering what it was, set that to zero. You will see kind of that our the center of our hexagon has moved directly to this side. You can tell by the three points that still remain. Let me move this cursor out of the way. These three points that still remain, that now our X origin has not been offset by half of the UV plane. If we set our Y back to zero, you'll see that now the UV plane's origin is at the bottom left. Yeah, it's just generally at the bottom left. If you've seen the Cartesian plane, we're dealing with all positive values for X and Y. So zero is found at the bottom left-hand corner. To center our hexagon, we need to put the X offset at 0 0.5 and the Y offset at 0 0.5. Now we're going to need to do more to these offsets and values later on, but this is just so I can explain it. The size dictates, well, essentially the size of the hexagon, so increasing it doesn't really help me demonstrate. Shrinking it, however, we can see, I gave it a margin of 0 0.5. 0.01, uh, let me just set that to zero. You can see the 0 0.01 was subtracted from this now perfect 0.4 size hexagon. I'm trying so hard to figure out how to describe size. It is just kind of the size. It's the, it's the size of the hexagon. If I have a better description for size, I'll cut it into the video. Hey, it's me, the cut, I guess. Size is described as by our hex grid website is the distance between the center of the hexagon and one of its points. It is also the radius of the outer circle, which we haven't even reached yet in this whole process. So yeah, that's a better explanation. Either way, now you can see what we were doing with all this math. Okay, so that ends part one of this hex node process. 
Thanks for watching, and if you want to see the last projects I did, please click up here to the left. And if you just want to see the rest of my artwork, please click up here to the right. And if you want to see the rest of the series as it comes out, please hit the notification bell and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and joke out!